Imagine you're a 16th century Russian peasant. While you're minding your own peasanty business, making borscht or something, suddenly two big dudes dressed in black kick in your door, drag you out of your house, and throw you in the snow. You look up. Holy shit, it's Ivan the Terrible. Unfortunately for you, you're going to be bear poop in the woods in a few hours. Hello, my name is Jack, and on this channel we explore the history and methods of secret police forces. Today, we are going to see how brutal the Oprichniki were. But first, we are here because authoritarianism is a personal interest of mine. I read The Dictator's Handbook, which basically inspired my podcast because there was not a dedicated secret police show. Yeah, there's content on the KGB or the Gestapo, but have you ever heard of the Cheka, the third section, the Priobrzezinski office? I hadn't either, so here we are. Personally, I have little experience with authoritarianism because fortunately I grew up in the United States. The most authoritarian place I've been is China, when I was just a wee lad. But in 2013, we learned the NSA could make holiday calendars for the next 10,000 years using only dick pics. Then, in 2020, I was in South Minneapolis when George Floyd was killed. Literally, he died less than three miles from me. Shit hit the fan in my city and elsewhere. It was truly terrifying. Oh, and there is a pandemic. I'm not a historian or political scientist. I'm a math nerd. My content is not an endorsement of any political ideology or party. I just explore secret police and have a taste for dark and disturbing history. Consider this your content warning. What are secret police? The secret police are not your donut dunking cops. They're closer to a paramilitary group, operate covertly, and they enforce the government's political will using terror tactics, torture, and re-education. Secret police target the political rivals and opposition of an autocrat, usually a charismatic figure with a cult of personality. They can be distinct from the military because an army may not always be loyal to the leader, whereas secret police are an extension of the regime. How did they develop in Russia? In the 9th century BCE, Vikings explored the rivers of modern-day Russia. Local Slavic people called these river-faring Vikings Rus, and the two societies became intertwined over generations forming the Russian people. Novgorod and Kiev became important cities and eventually united to establish the Kievan Rus, which ruled for three centuries. However, the Golden Horde invaded in 1223 and dominated the land for 200 years, during which time the Grand Duchy of Moscow gained influence by cooperating with the Tatars. In 1480, Ivan the Great ended Tatar monetary tributes, extended Russian territory, and embraced the Byzantine Orthodox Church. Ivan the Great was succeeded by his son, Vasily III. Then came Ivan IV, better known as Ivan the Terrible. Ivan's parents likely fell victim to violent power struggles among Russia's nobility, the boyars. With Ivan being orphaned, the boyars saw an opportunity to manipulate him for their own gain. This power struggle exposed young Ivan to extreme violence, bloodshed, and death without parental guidance. This is where trauma comes from. However, the boyars sealed their own fate because their actions only fueled Ivan's deep-seated hatred for them. In 1547, Ivan was crowned Tsar and Grand Prince of all Russia. He embarked on a mission to centralize power, update legal codes, and promote Russian Orthodox Christianity. Simultaneously, he sought to limit the influence of the boyar aristocracy. Meanwhile, Ivan faced many external challenges like defending from Tatar incursions and conflicts with neighboring empires. He also wanted some of those thick Baltic seaports for trade, but Livonia, Poland, Lithuania, and Sweden were like, oh hell no. Ivan was that bad neighbor banging on his walls at two in the morning. It didn't help that some years later the Crimean Tatars seized Moscow and set it on fire. In 1564, Ivan noped out of Moscow for his private complex in Alexandrov for some reason. Historians remain uncertain about his motives for this. They speculate that it might have been due to ongoing challenges in the Livonian War or Ivan's warped mental health. Did you know Ivan the Terrible may have had syphilis? If that disease is left untreated, the bacteria can affect your noodle. Yes, but your other noodle too. If true, it could explain Ivan's level of paranoia. He established a quote, state within a state, the Oprichnina. This arrangement allowed Ivan to exercise absolute control over his collection of Oprichnina territories. Everything outside of that was referred to as the Zemshina. If you were in this homicidal cool kids club, you were an Oprichnik. 
There were an estimated 6,000 Oprichniki. These people included soldiers, police, ministers, bureaucrats, and others in Ivan's administration. Admission to the Oprichnina was contingent upon passing a loyalty test and background check. Land and wealth were awarded to those who joined. Ivan imposed widespread repressions on the Russian people from the Oprichnina. This topic remains pretty controversial. I did my best deciphering sources from almost 500 years ago, so honestly, who the fuck knows, man? The Oprichniki patrolled towns on Black Horse horses, wore all black clothing, an eerie reminiscence to the Nazgul from The Lord of the Rings. An opponent of Ivan's, Prince Andrei Kurbsky, described them as the children of darkness. Damn. Legend has it that the Oprichniki carried a severed dog's head and a broomstick, symbolizing their mission was to sniff out traitors and sweep them away. Surviving accounts from two Livonian POWs who later joined the Oprichniki provide insights into their activities. Members pledged unwavering loyalty to the Grand Prince and underwent ritualistic initiations like a medieval frat. Once part of the group, they operated with impunity, answering only to the Tsar or their own leadership. One of the Oprichniki's leaders, a man named Malyuda Skuratov, killed the Tsar's cousin and strangled an Orthodox spiritual leader to death for speaking out against the Tsar. Honestly, strangulation was probably the best way to go if you pissed these guys off. Ivan hosted dinner parties where Oprichniks tormented victims while he stuffed his face with food and laughed. One victim was stripped naked and forced to chase chickens while they used her for target practice with their bows. Bruh. Ivan visited dungeons to witness the tortures and executions of victims by impalement, drowning, burning, boiling, whipping, hanging, and mutilation. Sometimes they tossed people in pens with hungry bears to be mauled and eaten alive. Bruh. Despite all this, these guys supposedly acted with religious piety. While these guys were busy with their carnival of violence, the government in Moscow tried to secure its position. The city of Novgorod played a key role in Russia's economic and cultural landscape. Its strategic location made it a vital hub for trade and commerce because they maintained strong trade ties with downstream regions. This made Moscow jealous because Novgorod's position threatened Moscow's ability to exert its hard, throbbing influence upon the region. Ivan's many wars and conflicts also cost money, like a lot of money, which led to higher taxes, which were most burdensome on the peasants. In the Novgorod region, Ivan's government dispatched surveyors to assess the discontent of the peasants. Peasants were not happy about paying more taxes. The American came out of them. Tensions with Moscow escalated. Then, the supposedly impregnable fortress of Izborsk was captured by forces hostile to Russia. Ivan decided to exile Novgorod's inhabitants and frame its prince for a attempted assassination of the Tsar. Ivan thought Novgorod needed to be put in its place, using some sort of massacre that would end up on Wikipedia one day. It began with the execution of Prince Vladimir of Novgorod. However, Ivan was uncomfortable with the idea of killing Vladimir directly, instead coercing him into suicide by drinking poisoned wine. Not a bad way to go if I can have a lot of non-poisonous wine beforehand. Then, Vladimir's wife and their nine-year-old daughter were executed, along with their chef and others implicated in a conspiracy against Ivan. In January 15. 70, Ivan and his forces came to Novgorod. Ivan insisted on attending mass because you can't spell massacre without mass. After church, instead of eating donuts and drinking coffee, he had the archbishop arrested and initiated a terror campaign. The Oprichniki threw women and children with their hands bound into an icy river while patrols on boats killed any survivors. Malyuda Skuratov, the guy with the priest choking kink, ordered people to be roasted over an open flame or strung up by their hands while burning their eyebrows off. Families of suspected traitors were subject to brutal interrogations. Monasteries and cathedrals had their priceless artifacts stolen. You know, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to attend mass knowing you're going to violate a certain two commandments. The Oprichniki extended their reign of terror to other cities, including Peskov, where the inhabitants just submitted to Ivan's will out of fear. The Novgorod massacre left an estimated 15,000 people dead, maybe even more, but it's impossible to say for sure. The Oprichnina occupied Novgorod to enforce loyalty to Ivan. It was government by terror for seven years until the Crimean Tatars burned down Moscow. The Oprichnina and the Zemstchina had to unite to create a stronger defense, which ended the Oprichniki in 1572. Meanwhile, Ivan bludgeoned his own son to death. Does disregard for their son's life remind you of someone? Hmm. 
Because Ivan eliminated the primary male heir to the throne, Ivan set the stage for the eventual end of the Rurik dynasty. Nice going, bro. Ivan the Terrible died in 1584, marking the end of his rule. The Oprichniki were so brutal that they inspired Tchaikovsky to write an entire opera about them. They've made some cameo appearances in modern media, too. Unfortunately, they wouldn't be Russia's last secret police. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did. Agents dismissed.